Okay, so in the last video we looked at how to take the cog off and replace it with a different one. What we're going to do now is how we put the wheel back in the bike and how we tension the chain, how we make sure all of those little bits are all correct. So, from off screen we produce the rest of the bicycle. What we're going to do, we're going to take our wheel here and we're just going to put it in very lightly like that. You'll notice that what we're not doing yet is actually slotting the axle into the dropouts. The reason for that is that first we need to take our chain like this and we hook it around the cog. Okay? Now we're ready to slot it in. So, just nice and carefully. What you sometimes find is you need to undo these axle nuts a little bit further just to give yourself a bit of room. And there we go. Nicely in like that. Okay. Straighten everything up a bit. What we want to do now is take our chain and hook it around the chain ring like this. So that's our starting position. Okay. Chain's still very slack, but it's around the cog, it's around the chain ring, and the wheel is slotted into the dropouts. Our next step is to pull the wheel gently backwards and tension the chain correctly. Okay? Shouldn't be super tight, you should have a little bit of jiggle in it still. If it's super tight, it just puts a lot of tension in it, puts a lot of stress in the components. Everything sticks together and everything becomes doesn't spin freely and it wears out all the parts really quickly. So, the first step when I'm doing this, there are different approaches, but this is the, the way I like to use. I sit down, my legs either side of the back wheel, and my chin almost resting on it, because what I'm doing is I'm looking down the line of the back wheel, and I'm trying to see that the space to the right of it and to the left of it, as it sits in between these chain stays, is about equal. So the first thing I do, just very roughly, is I try and get a little bit of tension on it. So I put my hand behind it, and I just push it back towards myself. I hold it there with one hand, and then I just use my fingers to do these bolts up a little bit. Okay, one hand, the other hand. There we are. And that just gives me a, a rough first idea of where it's going to go. Now, if you've got these little adjuster screws here, you can use these, and screw these in, so that they gradually push the wheel backwards. Um, a lot of bikes don't have these, so I'm going to show you how to do this without these screws. Um, if you do have these screws and you want to use them, it does make the process a bit easier because you can just really fine-tune it and gradually use them to push the wheel back. Without those, what you do is you move one side back a little bit, tighten it up, move the other side back a little bit, tighten it up, and you gradually walk the wheel backwards in the dropouts until it's sitting where you want it to sit. Okay. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you a little bit from my angle what this looks like. Pass me the camera a second. Thank you. So, what I'm doing from here is I'm looking just in here, and I'm looking just at this gap here on that side of the wheel, and I'm looking at the gap here just there on that side of the wheel. And you can see there that the gap on the left, okay, you can see that sliver of carpet there, that's quite a bit bigger than the gap on the right. Actually, no, it's, it's, no, I say it, it's roughly the same size. Okay, so we've probably got that roughly centered. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the chain. And that's still much too loose. Okay, so what I want is a bit more tension on this side. So I'm going to undo this, I'm going to push the wheel over with my, my left hand. And what this is doing, this is moving the wheel really close to this chainstay. Okay, that's not a massive issue, I can fix that in a minute just by moving that side as well. That will put a little bit more tension on the chain, so I don't want this to be super tight. So I'm going to go about there. I wish I could tell you that there was a great way of doing this precisely, and that there was some magical way of you know, getting it right first time. But there isn't, you know, sometimes this will take you a few minutes and sometimes it will get quite irritating and frustrating. 
just going to work for it. Take our spanner, going to tighten this just a little bit, just enough so that it doesn't slip, like that. Now, like I said earlier, in order to put a bit of tension there, I've moved the wheel too far in this direction. I need to move it backwards on this side now to compensate. And because I've got a spoked wheel, a good way of doing that is to hold the chainstay with your left hand, wrap a finger around the spokes, and just pull a little bit. Okay. Again, I'm looking down the line of the wheel, trying to see, is it nice and straight? How's my chain tension? Now that is a little bit loose. So what I'm actually going to do, instead of setting the wheel straight, I'm going to pull it a tiny bit too far to the left. Then I'm going to tighten that up, loosen this, and pull it a tiny bit back to the right. And with any luck, that will give me an acceptable chain tension. Okay, so I'm just walking it to the left, and then I'm walking it a little bit to the right. So, pull with the left hand. Get that a little bit tight. Then I'm going to loosen this a bit. Push it that way a tiny touch. And tighten it up again. How are we doing? Still a bit too loose. Let's take it a little bit more. Okay, that, that amount of wobble, that is about the minimum you want. Okay, um, so I could make this a little bit tighter. What you generally find is that when you tighten these nuts up, it tends to get a bit tighter anyway. So I'm actually, I'm not going to bother with that. I'm going to tighten it up from here. And what you'll probably find is that we get a little bit more tension in the chain anyway. Okay, so tighten that up a bit. I'm going to say, how are we doing on the left? And I think we just need to come a tiny bit further on the left, just a millimetre or so. So a very little bit of adjustment here. I'm going to do that up nice and tight like that. Check my chain tension. You can see that's got a little bit tighter. And now, because I've got these adjuster screws, I'm actually just going to screw these in like this. Now because this particular frame, I know it says iceberg on it, it's actually a DF4 frame. This particular frame, if you don't use these screws, you invalidate the warranty. So if you do have them, read the handbook, read the instruction manual, check and see whether you actually need to use them. On these frames, you do. Okay, so I'm going to tighten these up just so that they meet the axle. Like that. And what that means is that if I do a hard acceleration, a hard effort, even if I haven't really tightened this up properly, the wheel is not going to slip forwards. Okay? Now, there is a test that you can do to see if your chain is tight enough. Okay, it's not supposed to be super tight. That's the big mistake people make. It should only be tight enough so that if you spin the wheel, you can't, you shouldn't be able to just push it off the chain ring. Okay? If I'd been able to just push that chain off and it fallen off the chain ring, I would have had to tighten it up a bit more. Um, but because it hasn't fallen off, it's fine. There's another test as well. This is the sort of the famous one. It's called the shake test. And what you do, you get this spinning nice and fast. Like that. Take your bike. And you give it a shake. And if the chain doesn't fall off, it's fine, okay? It does not need to be any tighter than that. And that's how we do that.